Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome to another episode of Geek Dha- the Geek Dhaba podcast. On today, may the 4th be with you, we will be talking about the Star Wars movies and tearing them up. Joining us today are Mubarak, Junaid and Kanza. So guys, what did you, talk, what did you say about today's episode? I'm ready. Are you? Long time coming. We should have done it after Mandalorian, but okay. Yes. I am looking forward to it. Okay. So on that front, let's just dive right into it and open the Geek Hub. Okay, everybody, so let's get started. It's going to be a quick discussion. Everybody's going to get a couple of seconds to talk about each movie and why it deserves the grade. They're going to look at everybody else's grades on the team because everybody is in Star Wars almost. And we're going to uh, put it on the tier list based on the majority of votes. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the first one. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. This movie is just brilliance. It is way ahead of its time, very clearly. Uh, George Lucas didn't have any faith in it when he made it. He thought it would fail. Uh, he also took a trip to Hawaii, or he was supposed to take a trip to Hawaii on the weekend the movie was coming out, not expecting it to be such a big hit. And my God, it's so good that People still quote this movie. People still talk about this movie. And it's the movie that started everything. Usually, the things that on this tier list, the things that start uh, on, on our tier list segments, things that start off the franchise usually don't go anywhere higher than a B. We did that with Pokemon. We did that with uh, BBS. I mean, BBS, yeah, DCEU. But here, I have to say, in my opinion, a New Hope deserves an A. It was a fantastic movie from beginning to end. Well written, well structured, and it's a, it's just a great standalone movie. Even it just didn't even need a sequel. There was not even a sequel planned for it at the time. It was just there, and it was just a good movie overall. You could watch it and not care about anything else. So I say it gets an A. Mubarak, over to you. Yeah, everything you just said, I agree one hundred percent. I also put it in an A. It was what started the journey. Junaid? Uh, okay. Uh, I will give the grade afterwards, but this was a great movie. And yeah, it, it, was, it could be watched as a standalone movie. The problem with this was, the problem with me was I didn't watch it for release date. I watched it for episode. So for me, this was the fourth movie which I watched. But even if I watched it as a solo. This was a great, great movie. Mark Hamill was great. And of course, Chewbacca, who get, who get Chewbacca. So uh, I would place it on S category. I mean, I love the movie. I, I have seen it a couple of times. I mean, the first time I saw the movie was at home with a couple of people when I was first getting into Star Wars years ago. So I... actually did enjoy it and so i'm going to give this movie a b because i feel like that there are like tiny things here and there that could have been improved and i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to hate me for this score but i feel like there were some things that could have been better hmm that's an interesting thing um so let's talk about other people's scores and uh, the majority so amar gave it an a uh Samin gave it an A. Yasher gave it an A. Hassan gave it an S. Asad gave it an A. Amir gave it an A. Sohail gave it a B. Majority gave it an A. Okay. So that's two S's, two B's, and the rest of it is A. So majority rules. A new hope goes to A. 
Now let's talk about the second movie. And you have to be insane to not count this movie as the best Star Wars movie, regardless of what we have ahead. Empire Strikes Back has one of the best cinematic reveals in history with Darth, with the Darth Vader reveal. It has the journey of Luke going into uh, fighting Darth Vader, the choreography of Darth Vader fight for the time, considering the limitations of what special effects were and how much they could actually do with the lightsaber fighting back in the day was amazing. The storytelling was amazing. The whole foreshadowing of Luke being Darth Vader's son was just everything about this movie was fantastic from beginning to end. I'd say it deserves an S. Yeah, I too uh, give it an S. Uh, I watched this as a kid, a very young kid. So that Darth Vader scene, that fight scene, it terrified me and excited me at the same time. I thought that was fantastic. And I remember I was eating uh, buttered popcorn and when he finally says that, no, I'm your father, I just, I stood up and I, I dropped my popcorn all over the floor. <laughs> and I was like, no, how? I, I, was, I was five years old when I watched this movie. I was like four years. I think I was, I was around the same age, probably around that time as well. And I was like, what? Oh my God. And oh, it just... It was, wow. Junaid? Okay, so yeah, this was whoever doesn't give it an S is, is a low life in front of me. So I will, so this is this is confirmed I'm giving it an S. Yes, Darth Vader was genius. And the way Luke, I mean Luke was to perfection in the first movies. Not talking about the episodes wise, but I'm talking about uh, year wise, release date wise. The younger Luke gave a beautiful performance. And on this note, I mean, Yoda, Yoda was uh, giving him the training in this movie. So, I mean, this movie, it's, it's like a masterpiece. As Omer also said, it's, it's Jeff Kidd. Jeff Kidd. So, uh, I will give it an S. I mean, I give it an S as well because, like, this was actually the first Star Wars movie I had ever saw. Like, this was the movie that got me into the entire series. I mean, like, that was because of the fact that I was, like, nine years old and I was one of those full-on getting into fights with everybody kind of people. So my friend was like, okay, let me introduce you to this. You're going to love this and you're probably going to be more obsessed than me. And... I mean, the Luke, I am your father scene is something I still love. So uh, let's talk about everybody else's score after that. So Amar gave it an S. Uh, Samin gave it an A, which we'll have to have a talk with her uh, after this. Yashar yeah. gave it an S. Yeah. Asim gave it an S. Asim gave it an A. Again, we need to have a talk with him. Amir, A. Uh, Suhaib gave it a B. I think that's the person we need to talk to the most. Uh, by the way, this is Suhaib from uh, Estonia. Yeah. yeah. Suhaib from Feslabad, however, gave this a D. He said that it was cheesy and the Darth Vader reveal was Dude. sad. Dude. And he's Dude. like, it doesn't even make sense. Darth Dude, Vader has a red cool. lightsaber. Luke has a blue lightsaber. How could they be father and son? Okay, that can't be right. That he, I have the I have the text in front of me. I'm reading it right now. He's he has a death wish. Well, I don't worry, don't worry. He gave me yes, <laughs> he cannot be trusted. Yeah, obviously, he's not mentally sane. Yeah. Let's just put this in the S category where it definitely belongs. <laughs> and let's talk about episode six now. Mm, I would have loved so much to give this movie an A, but I'm going to give it a B. And I don't know if you guys know why, because I guess everybody I told I'm giving this movie a B kind of uh, asked me why. But the reason I'm giving this movie a B is because I feel like the original vision for this movie would have been better. Revenge of the Jedi? Return of the Return. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. No, no, the original concept, Revenge of the Jedi. Revenge of the Jedi. 
And in that concept, we would have had Luke turning to the dark side, Han Solo dying, and basically would end with just Luke becoming the new Darth Vader or whatever he's supposed to become. And the reason I say that would have been better is because that was what every the entire journey of the original trilogy was leading to, right? The whole dark outfit that Luke was wearing was like a foreshadowing to that. Luke, it makes sense for the journey for Luke to go into the dark side at the point. But the problem was that George Lucas saw it as an opportunity to sell more toys. And that's why their Ewoks were certainly a part of it. And script had to be rewritten so that it would accommodate a child-friendly ending. And uh, they could sell a bit more toys. And we kind of attribute the toy selling affecting movies to things from the 90s and now. But truth is, it started like way back when with Star Wars. And it had an impact on Star Wars. So for me, because of that, and I'm sure like not everybody has the same thought process as me on this, but because of that, I feel like I have to give the turn of the Jedi. Um, I actually liked uh, episode six a lot. Like apart from the Ewoks, nah, I'm I'm okay with that. But the way it started off with the the whole Jabba arc, and then you know they had to go and it it was really well. For my time, when when I, I watched this when I was a kid the first time, so I I enjoyed it at that time a lot. So for the child friendly uh, ending, it worked really well at the end. Um, although they actually implied the Ewoks ate the stormtroopers and everyone else. That's that's the only way they were having a party with that much food. You know, resorting to cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, Janaid. Uh, okay, so. I enjoyed this. I mean, the old movies were the best of the Star Wars whole franchise, but I won't give this an S. I will probably give I will give it an A. Because yeah, the thing again was we had another scenario which the movie was going to go, and then they changed it, and then Luke's battles with uh, Jabba and trying to get Dark Dark Vader into the good side and the second planet, right? Uh, there was a uh, uh, what 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 was it? The second planet. I don't remember the name. Death Star, I think, or whatever. The, the story went towards Death Star. It destroyed the second Death Star, this planet and stuff. So I will, I will I will just give it an A for this, and I will let Kanza take the rest. I mean, I would give the movie a B because, I mean, for me, I preferred the plot that they were originally going to go with. Because, like, I watched the movie at the age where I was looking for more stuff towards that side instead of looking at looking at it from the point where it was like it was going to be a childish ending towards it. There is going to be a child-friendly ending, and I was looking for something more towards what we were originally going to get. So that was the only thing that set me off from it otherwise it would have gotten an a from me as well yeah the thing the thing with me giving it an a is because i watched <laughs> all of these at once and looking looking at the new movies uh yeah this deserves an a because the new movies once we come to that it will be bad so we just i'll leave it at that but talking about what everybody else thought about this movie now amar gave it an a samin gave it an a yasha gave it an a hasan gave it an a asad gave it an s amir gave it a b uh sahib gave it an a hmm. okay. majority seem to have given it an a against my best wishes but okay asad gave it an s yeah, I know. I mean, it's not yeah. not that it's a bad movie. I just feel like um, it's having to change direction because of you know capitalism was the reason that I didn't like it. Like I feel like so George kind of says that the trilogy, the original trilogy, and the prequel trilogy are like meant to be this poetry that rhyme. And you can see that kind of in the first, in the next three movies that we're about to talk about and the original three movies. 
But the only place where they don't rhyme is the third movie, because we have like Anakin turning to the dark side, and then we were supposed to have Luke turning to the dark side. So okay. yeah, but no, my point is, uh, Asad gave this as an S purely because of Princess Leia in her slave outfit. Okay, we, we all know that. We, just, we yeah, all know that. That's we just, all know this. <laughs> that's just the point. That's just the point. All right. Let's talk about the least, like, okay, the second least favorite movie of the Star Wars franchise. And I'm about to shock you all with my score on this movie. Episode one, The Phantom Menace. Imagine, I'm going to set the scene a bit. Um, it's 1998. Uh, the trailer for this just dropped, or was it early to 1999? But, like, the hype was real. Right, you could see like the lightsabers and the the Naboo fighters and the droids, and it just kind of going crazy. And then the movie dropped, and it's a shame that one thing in this entire movie ruined the movie experience. Right, and we all know what that one thing was, right? And it's Jar Jar, by the way. Okay, so the movie itself didn't live up to the expectations that we were having for it when it came out. It ended up being a lot of political discussions and it ended up being slapstick comedy with Jar Jar, at least 40% of that, right? And I get it, the political talks, I don't know what George Lucas was smoking when he wrote this movie. And like, he was really into C-SPAN back in the day, I guess. And he just really wanted the political aspect to be there. And Jar Jar is just a product of the times, right? The slapstick comedy was big in the 90s, right? It was like, it was dying by late 90s, but George was like, let me take a stab at it, right? Despite that, despite that, I gave this movie a B. And I can justify that by saying it gave us amazing lightsaber fights. It gave us amazing lightsaber choreography. Uh, it gave us my favorite Jedi of all time, Qui-Gon Jinn, right? I love Liam Neeson, I love Qui-Gon. I actually am looking to buy like Saber Forge to Qui-Gon the lightsaber. Like that's how much I love Qui-Gon, right? Um, it gave us one of the best Star Wars villains in Dark Mode, right? Like fan favorite villain. Um, it, it also gave us the shittiness that is midichlorian, but at least like as shitty as that is, it's at least an explanation for how the force works, right? And it's better than just saying that the force is magic. The Phantom Menace is actually not a well-written movie, but it is a visually appealing movie. Uh, it is very Star Wars-y in that front. It gave us a lot of cool stuff. Uh, to look at in terms of lightsaber fights and it gave us an explanation for the past because we all all we knew about Star Wars at the time was oh the only Jedi is Luke and the only Sith is Darth Vader. For me this movie gets a B. I mean despite I mean if it didn't have Jar Jar in a political box I could have seen this movie being in it right if it was just a little better written better covered in my opinion. Oh Miss I like this movie it's a good movie. Muy, muy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to do that. This is the okay. episode, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we deal with on a regular basis. Okay, Misa, I love you long time. <laughs> I was not expecting this. <laughs> um, so. I could tell from his face that he wanted to do this for a very long time. A very long time. You have no idea. <laughs> As much as I don't like Jar Jar and the whole political drama and all that, the elements, like Omer said, Darth Maul, Qui-Gon, space battles, it all balances it out. So for me, it's smack dab in the middle. I have this as a B. Okay. uh, I won't give this a bad result. I won't give this a good result. The thing which again, I've stated before was this was the first movie I watched. I watched it episode-wise. And uh, if, this is, if, this is, if this wasn't watched, watch would be 
and worth watching, I would have not gone forward with it. So the only thing which I liked about this movie was as much as you hated R2, R2-D2, best. Other than that, the performance with Anakin was just superb. And of course, I haven't seen a movie with Evan McGregor where he didn't perform and where he didn't like give his level best. So I know, I know Omer is looking like Kigon Jin. What would I say about him? To be honest, I've seen a lot of movies with nonstop and, you know, those, those kind of movies from Liam Mason. So I was just having that image of Liam as I went into this movie. And so I will give it a B, but it was not a bad movie at all. I hated the performance of Natalie Portman. That's it. They could have gone better with it. I don't know. It was it was just confusing. So I will just give it a B. So I will let Kanza go forward with her side. For me, I mean, I absolutely love the whole Darth Maul thing. I love the lightsaber fights because like, I have always been more towards movies where you get good fight scenes. You get to see a good villain arc for it. So I would give this movie a B. And the only thing that I would want out of this to be a bet- to make it a better movie would be to make it somewhat better written, to have somewhat of a better way for them to process a plot and maybe a little bit less of George Lucas. Let's talk about everybody else's scores. I just I just saw the episode one score and I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Uh, Amar gave it a B. Um, Samin gave it a B. Yashar gave it a D. He, I can get it. He, he hates this movie for some reason. Uh, Hassan gave it a C. Asad gave it a B. Amir gave it an A. I'd like to hear his thoughts later. Um, Kanza gave it a B like he did. Uh, Suhail gave it an A. Majority settled on B for. Well, I guess. Oh, Amir, Amir loves Jar Jar. He does? Oh my God. Yeah. I am not Dara, surprised. Dara asked for Suhaib in this movie. Yeah, Suhaib likes it for the double lightsabers and the lightsaber fights. Yeah. But... So majority reason, reason, basically. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Moving on to. So, I know everybody hates Phantom. Okay, I thought everybody hated on Phantom Menace, because clearly I was wrong on that one. But this is the movie that I hate the most when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah. And I'm talking about, I'm, I mean, I mean the main series Star Wars movie. This is the movie I like the least. Right? It's Attack of the Clones. It's exactly as it sounds. Right? And this movie to me, was Anakin going through puberty the movie, <laughs> right? And that's pretty much that. That that's like I feel like that sentence sums up this movie very aptly, <laughs> right? Because sixty percent of this movie is Anakin lusting after Padme and yeah. going through that journey. Like, yes, hey, here have Anakin and here have Padme. We don't know what their ages are exactly. Because technically Padme is supposed to be older than Anakin, right? But here, let's throw them into this romantic relationship because we need a mother for Luke Skywalker. Okay, I I, I won't go to where my mind is going, so I will just tell you in the chat. All right, sure. So let let's uh, let we need a mother for Luke and Leia. So let's just make it Padme because <laughs> we speak, we for some reason set that up in the first movie. Right, so there you go. What are their ages? Why would you ask me that? Who cares? <laughs> we cast an older actor. My God, that was all this movie. And oh, you know what? You're telling the general Star Wars audience who doesn't like love stories? Well, throw in some Vader type journey in there in the middle. Have them feel some sand for all I care, right? And that's it. That's literally it. Oh, what do you mean? What do you mean this is a Star Wars love story? Throw in a big arena and a bunch of clones and Star Wars fights just because we can. That'll make up for everything. No, no, it did not make up for everything. I abhor this movie. I, if I could skip this movie, I would. The only good things about this movie were, yes, the Genosha fight, despite me making fun of it a while ago, was pretty damn cool. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> and the level, the levels for that uh, fight in Battlefront and in the Star Wars Episode Two video game on the PS2 were amazing to play. Um, Count Dooku's lightsaber is just amazing. I, I mean. The boomerang action in all the video games that's come to be like to make perfect sense. I love the curved design. Uh, wow, a lot of good things about this movie. That's it. It, it gets a D from me. That's, that's all I have to say. Oh, man. I am disappointed. But, oh, well. I have this movie at an A, okay? First off, Django Fett. The whole beginning with that assassin and then Django Fett reveal. And then his ship, Slave One, the seismic charges, him and Obi-Wan, the, the fight in the rain. I, I don't know how you've discounted all of that. That's like the best part of the movie. All right. Let me tell you why I discounted that. Django Fett was just there to get his head chopped off. That is his only existence in the entire movie. Yeah, yeah, but you, you can't discount his journey. I mean, his end was bad, but then his journey was pretty good. Yes, here, here's five minutes. Anything I liked about him. The rain. Oh, you guys like that? You guys thought he's a badass? Well, now he gets his head chopped off by Mace Windu. Well, that's what lightsabers do, okay? The Mandalorians <laughs> didn't know at that time. He went And out, then the clones. He went out worse than Boba Fett did in episode six. Mm, on par on par no but i think it was fantastic for what it was i mean the love story eh, okay but everything else it was it, it was beautiful man it was the score the it, it was it was fantastic i i have this as an a Junaid, okay. what do you say uh no i did not like this movie uh again this movie revolved around as Omar said, because it's Star Wars, so they can throw anything in it. Anakin, with his puberty and his lust, uh, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. That just makes me puke in a way. The things which I liked about this movie was again uh, the fight with the what's it called, uh, the one which they fought in Camino. What was the name? Uh, Fango, Django, right? Django Fett. Yeah, Django. So the fight with Django was pretty great. The way Mace just decapitated Django, perfect. Other than that, the only good thing which I found was the arrival of Yoda with the Clone Wars, Clone Army. That's it. So I will put this at B. So I'll let Kanga go ahead with it. Words cannot describe how much I hate this movie. I mean, everybody knows that puberty phase thing that happened in that entire movie. I don't even know how to describe it because Padma was is originally supposed to be what in her mid twenties or something, and Anakin was like a like young child when that in that movie. So the entire thing was just like made me want to throw up, especially considering the fact that I watched that movie when I was like fourteen, maybe. So it was just exhausting to watch i mean i barely made it through that barely made it through that movie once and i have refused to watch it since the only thing i liked was the head being sliced off part because honestly it deserved it Jane, what was your score for this movie a b, was b. Hmm. amar gave it a d samin gave it a b yasha gave it a c Hassan gave it a C. Asad gave it a B. Amr gave it an S. What is up with this dude? I need to talk to him. Kanza gave it a C. Uh, that brings it up to what? A B on average? It's a tie. It's a tie. It's B or a C. Would, would you need to watch the B? I, I we have like three Bs and to... we have three Cs. Yeah, I'm this close to bringing my score down to a D, so... You know what? It's a D from me, actually. Okay, so that, it's B. That, then it makes it a B majority. Damn it. Thank you, Kanza. I said D. Yeah, yeah. and we go yeah. by majority. Oh this is how it works. Welcome to democracy. Right. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> okay. So... Foreshadowing for the next episode. So this is how liberty dies. 
you know. Yeah. Star- <laughs> this is what they did with democracy. Star Wars Episode Three. I love that. I love that you said that because that's exactly what happened in this movie. They just like, it's like you know what? Screw democracy. I want fascism. <laughs> <laughs> But he did say that he loved democracy. Okay, you can't you can't deny that. Yes, he loves democracy so long as he's winning. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Three was a return to what Star Wars should have been, especially yeah. when talking about what Star Wars was, the events, what the environment of Star Wars was pre Episode Four. This movie is what all three of these previous movies should have been like. Right, we had the Clone Wars towards the end. We had General Grievous, who, by the way, I loved seeing in the animated original version of the Clone Wars that we used to see in 2004. I loved seeing him there, and I remember when I saw him, I was scared half to death because it was so weird to see a guy carrying four lightsabers. So yeah, um, yeah, seeing that original. Uh, Clone Wars, then leading up to this, because it was the perfect short segue into uh, episode three. Amazing. General Grievous is amazing. It gave us like the best memes. Like, I think most of all the memes from Star Wars came from episode three. Like, have you heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Hello there, General Kenobi. I mean, they all came from this movie. Yeah. So. And oh, let's not talk. Let's not forget that the remember whenever you want to overthrow a government, the first thing you do is slaughter younglings. Like that is essential, right? You gotta make barbecue shish kebabs out of the younglings, right? Um, the fight on Mustafar is probably one of the best fights in Star Wars history, right? Like it is amazing. That entire final act of act of the third movie is just. A roller coaster ride of emotions. We have uh, Yoda fighting Sidious. We have Anakin fighting Obi Wan. We have like Order sixty six being executed. It's just, it's just amazing, right? You know this is gonna happen because you've seen Episode four already, right? But it's just like you never expected it to be so high, like full of emotions and everything. It's just, I I have to give this an A. I have to, it's, I'd give it an S, but like, no, it it deserves an A. I'd I'd give it an S, I honestly, I would have, but no, like there's still some little issues I have with it. Like it kind of dragged with the whole Anakin journey into the dark side, because it was mostly talk, right? Because we had the beginning be very great. And then we had like towards the final act be amazing. And like everything in the middle was not Star Warsy. Like what you'd expect, but so we didn't have a lot of lightsaber fights in the older movies because of technological limitations. But now we don't have those limitations, and you're still choosing not to show off a lightsaber every ten minutes. That's a very petty uh, rant, but it's something that like I love good character development, but I feel like Anakin's character development was stretched more than it should have been. Right? We could have had a couple of things left and right included. To kind of wrap it up nicely. That's the only reason I'm giving it an A and not an S. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. This movie was fantastic, honestly. I watched I watched it so many times growing up. This is my favorite movie out of all, every single Star Wars movie. This is the best. Well, for me, my favorite. I have this as an S. Almost everything about this movie is perfect. Okay, I've chosen to ignore the bad parts because of how good the last act was and that emotion, that that heartbreak that you feel and Obi-Wan and Anakin and you were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. It was, oh, like it was, it was top notch, man. I don't know what, what more to say. I mean, we had some weird parts in this. I'm not gonna lie. Padme dying of sadness. What was that about? Lost the will to live. Yeah, yeah, just she's too sad. Like, no, I'm gonna die now. <laughs> and the youngling part, okay, it's you know, we had some good memes out of that. But at that time, it felt like kind of weird because I was pretty young at that time. So I'm just like, 
okay, that's weird. But everything else about this movie, I absolutely loved. The clones, the different variations in their armors, because this was the first time, like, in Attack of Clones, they were, like, all white stormtrooper And in this one, you have, like, each variation. Oh, my God. Oh, I just, I love this movie. My favorite. S, all the way. Okay, so, yes, this is one of my favorites from the whole Star Wars franchise. The things you hated the one where they slaughtered uh, the young uh, what's it called younglings uh, younglings yeah but i loved it i mean this really made the part of anakin being the villain look this this movie is a uh, extension of anakin which it shouldn't have been but again the the way it's been portrayed is good the only way which he could have been a villain is if he did something horrible, which we couldn't like swallow it. So the thing which that makes that is equal to him killing the younglings, right? Because he's been he's doing a very bad thing. Other than that, there were a lot of good scenes in this. The fight on. Uh, Mustafar was great between Obi Wan and Anakin, and it was it was emotional as well. But uh, then Palpatine taking on the four Jedi's, but then Yoda made battles Palpatine and defeats him, and it it was choreographed great in a way. Darth Vader was born in this. We all know. I mean, one of my favorite characters in Star Wars, one of them, is Darth Vader. If there if there was no Darth Vader. There was no franchise of uh, Star Wars in a way. General Grievous, I still get confused sometimes why there were two blue and there were two green. Uh, he stole them. Those yeah, were, but again, he, he stole those lightsabers. The last I knew was when someone was carrying them. Yeah, okay, he stole them. Okay, it's, it's fine. I will give it an S and I will let Tanda take the rest. Okay, so this might make you guys question my sanity a little bit, but my favorite scene in this entire movie was probably the youngest dying. And that I defined it, yeah. This because that defined him, like that defined that to what limits this dude was willing to go, like what he was willing to sacrifice, what he was willing to do to get his point across, which made his arc actually make a little bit sense for me, for him turning into Darth Vader. And the part I hated the most was the way they said Padme died. I mean, what the hell? I mean, they could have given so many other reasons, but she died from sadness. What was that? And it is one of my favorite movies, especially considering like how much we came across in this movie. We, we saw him being turned into Darth Vader. We got Palpatine. And we got a lot of other stuff as well. But I can give this movie a B. So just to add a couple more points before I talk about everybody else's score. Now, the killing of young lanes makes sense as a strategic move, right? Because obviously you get to kill the younger generation instead of indoctrinating them. Because you don't know how far along they are in the Jedi teachings and everything. I just, I just wanted to, the reason I bring this up is I just wanted to say that she gave me nightmares. Right? And I'm not kidding. Like, it gave me nightmares. Because I loved being a Jedi and I just kept having nightmares that Anakin came to kill me. And I know Anakin's a pretty powerful Jedi. <laughs> right? So... Omer at the age of 10 or 11 wouldn't have been able to deal with it. Right, so that being said, everybody else's scores are, Amar gave it a C, I've disowned them as a brother. Uh, Mubarak gave it an S, okay. Uh, Samin gave it a B, Yasser gave it a B, um, but uh, Hassan gave it an A, Asad gave it an S, Ahmed gave it an S, Sohail gave it a B, and it's I a, think we have a tie. We have a tie, but do we give it to the higher one or the lower one? Usually, I we have a rank in the middle. We, we're tied oh, between yeah, S yeah. and B, yeah. so it makes yeah. sense to just, just put it in. A. 
Yeah. yeah. Right? That makes sense. Um, great dad, I feel like it belongs there on. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So let's talk about episode seven. Again, setting the scene. It has been 10 years since we got a Star Wars movie last year. 10 whole years. Everybody was a bit skeptical because Disney had just bought the rights from LucasArts, right? And we all thought, you know, we're going to get a remake of episode four with Zac Afron as Han Solo and Selena Gomez as Princess Leia. So, like, you guys laugh now, but we all thought of the possibility in 2011 or 12 when this, take, uh, when this buyout happened. Right, that was what the meme. I forget who they cast it to, but anyway, uh, Tumblr had a field day with uh, the fan casting for the remake when Disney bought that. So it was a pleasant surprise when this movie came out. Um, it had it kind of so I, I have some say about this movie, I don't know where to start. This movie accurately depicts what George Lucas wanted for the Star Wars franchise, in which he says that the movies are poetry and they kind of mimic each other. They rhyme with one another. Episode one, episode four, and now episode seven, they rhyme, right? All, like everybody who watched episode seven seemed to have the same feeling. They all felt like this was a better version of episode four, or it was just as good as episode four. And that's, that was the point. It was meant to rhyme with episode four. We have this uh, person who may or may not be a Jedi, who, uh, who is a Jedi actually, and who deter- finds out that that person is a Jedi and they get access to this uh, device that would have helped them and they learn to use their abilities and they have to, they through a mentor, they have to overcome and deal with the enemy while also taking out this big ship in the sky that is destroying things. Literally the exact same plot as episode four, but it worked, right? It had enough differences to make it stand out. We had uh, a lot of cool characters. We had Possibly the death that had the most impact on me in the entirety of the Star Wars franchise because we watched me, Hassan, Saheb, and Amar drove and Yasser drove from Shorecourt to uh, Faisalabad, where there was a cinema, just to watch this movie. That was a three hour drive. All right. And we went and watched this movie on opening day in Pakistan, which by the way was a week later than the rest of the world for some reason, right? One of the few times that actually happened. But when that happened, that one scene, I think we all know what scene I'm talking about in the movie with Ben. Yes, Han's death. When that happened, me, all five of us screamed in the middle of the cinema. And everybody turned around and looked at us. Okay, what is this? Me, I was crying and Hassan was trying to comfort me while crying and stuff. Right? Because that, it hurt me. It broke me. And when I, when I watch episode 7 again, it still breaks me. And that is the kind of emotion that episode 7 captured beautifully. And the feeling of watching episode seven is just amazing. And for that, I wouldn't give it an S, but an A, it absolutely deserves. In my opinion. Take it away. People complain about how this is a copy of episode four. I say that it had to be. You had to bring the older fans from the 70s and the newest generation. Okay. And people who you know the newest generation and the older generation you had to bring them together this movie 
had to be a parallel, an almost exact parallel. This was the movie that actually was supposed to set the stage for the episode eight and episode nine. We'll get to that uh, when we get to that. I have this at an A. I, I love this movie. It was a good movie. Okay. The new, we had newer technology. We had the introduction of the cross guard lightsaber. That was fantastic. The first time we saw that, it was just like, and it's unstable. And you're just like, what is going on? Oh my God. It was, we had some good stuff. Junaid? This, yeah, as Omar said, the the breaking part, the breaking point for me in this movie was when Han died. And I literally started hating Kylo after it. And it was just, I don't want to speak about it uh, because it's, it's like it brings full rage in me. But again, they had to do something to make a huge impact. And I believe because Harrison Ford's getting older and they would have killed the character off at some point. But other than that, Ray versus Ren was good. The part where uh, Tylo was talking to the Raiders' helmet was good. Master Luke, again, Luke's Luke's the center point for Star Wars. He can never die. So, I mean, at, that was a good part. But Kylo, Kylo, I just started hating him from the from the gut in this movie. That's probably it, I believe. Uh, Ray was a new co- character in this, and that's the Millennium Falcons reveal was a good scene. The Falcons reveal was a very good scene, and that's I would probably give it an A because it the movie released after so long and it set a point for the next movies which came in the franchise. If it was a bad start, for example, a bad remake to the movie, a bad like part episode for the movie, nobody would have seen the next episode. So I will probably give it an A. I will give it an A and I will let Kanza speak. I mean, I absolutely love the movie. I mean, I love Kylo, to be honest, but like that's mostly because of the fact that his villain arc was confirmed for me. Like it was set in stone. Like it was done. It was a done deal that he was well and he is not gonna change his ways. When Han died, I mean, I remember I went to watch this movie with my dad, and I actually started crying, and he was just looking at me like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" And I was just like, "You will not understand, okay? This movie is like amazing. I mean, especially I love that how." They managed to bring together the old fans with the new ones. So it was something that everybody seemed to enjoy a lot. And just because of that, I can easily give this movie an A. Let's talk about everybody else. I think we're mostly in agreement. Amar gave it an A. Samin gave it a C. Yasha gave it a B. Hassan gave it a B. Asad gave it an S. Amir gave it a B. And Zuhair gave it an A. So majority, the movie has an A. Hmm, not a lot of bad movies in Star Wars, surprisingly. Anyway, let's talk about... Or oh, maybe we're just Star Wars fans. Let's talk about the movie a lot of people hate. Um, <sighs> The Last Jedi. We had to actually put his lightsaber down. <laughs> what can be said about The Last Jedi? It's not as bad as people say. I said it. All right? I said it. There is one movie which is worse than this, so... We'll get to talk about that when we get to that. We'll talk about that. (laughs) But The Last Jedi, when I came out of The Last Jedi, having watched it in cinema, because obviously Star Wars, I've watched on day one. I watched most of these superhero and Star Wars movies on day one. I came out of The Last Jedi thinking that it was better than Empire. And that might have been slightly misguided of me. It could have been like the rush of having to watch a Star Wars movie. But my sentiments aren't exactly wrong. 
it's not better than empire it's almost as good but not a word now the reason i say that is because again with the whole poetry that we have with episodes 4 5 and 6 with this movie people complained about the casino scene in the movie right and rightfully so until you realize that cloud city kind of had the same feel right and then you people complained about this bounty hunter being a traitor and until you realize you know lando was kind of the same thing right and you know every complaint that people have about this movie is kind of because it's rhyming with empire a lot of things that happen in this movie are exactly the same yeah empire, right except a bit more modern and taken characters exactly like the force awakens was right and if you don't see that i implore you to watch empire and then watch this apart from that luke having Luke has a really good role to play in this movie, despite being a jackass in the first part of this movie. Being told that his friend had just died, I don't know if anybody has seen the deleted scene, but like you can see the weight of that news on uh, Luke in that one deleted scene from this movie. The movie isn't perfect, right? So yeah. there, there are a lot of problems that this movie has, right? the fight choreography the fight scenes look amazing but they're not choreographed well right so like i think we all we all know talking about that infamous scene in the throne room where the jedi or those what are the royal troopers i think they're called they're just kind of flying off without being kicked or anything like that and just not fighting really well the infamous choreographed fight scene of this movie right um snoke went out like just like jango fed did right it just stupidly for no reason right um the reveal of ray ray's parents in this movie i blame ray johnson more than i blame anything else for that because he he was trying to take importance away from the heritage but yeah so there are problems with this movie and if those things were handled a bit better this movie would on i believe this movie honestly would have been as good as empire like it would have been almost as good as empire if not just as good as empire right and there are a couple of more like small little things that i'm probably overlooking on purpose or deliberately overlooking because i don't think they're that important but this movie doesn't deserve the hate now i gave it a c but i only gave it a c because i haven't given c to any other movie right and i felt like i need to give a movie a c right and i chose to give it to the last jedi otherwise i would have given it a b but i'm giving it a c i gave it a c because it wasn't good <laughs> okay so my gripes with this movie the whole casino arc they wasted finn as a character and then they introduced rose i don't have anything against rose but then the way they utilized her it didn't really I don't know it didn't vibe well and it's like there were some fantastic scenes in this movies but then there was way way more like uh plot holes than I would like to admit it just I understand what you mean by them wanting it to be like empire but it just it took away from the whole thing like the stage set in um the force awakens building on that if they had built on to that it would have been fantastic but it's just like they went a totally different direction all of a sudden different director and then there was just so much damage it was it was done there was nothing else that could be done about it just i give it a c junaid uh i didn't like like the movie but there were some points which were good the part i see was good was that they somehow brought luke back because luke's the face of star wars the whole low rex the super messy the, the whole ship gets destroyed the fight between luke and ray was good i'm not going to say it was the best but it was it was good the only part which i disliked was that luke could have 
killed Ray. Uh, not Ray. I'm talking about Kylo. Kylo, right? Luke could have killed him, but I don't know. Hearted, or maybe yeah, they, he was this, a ghost, though. Like yeah, a forced ghost. So I, I don't know if he could actually, or I, I don't. I know. mean, it it would have been nice if they had made him him try to kill him instead of just having a sword. The part where Luke, uh, the part where Yoda and Luke reunite, that was that was a good, that was good, that was like a very good moment. And the binary sunsets, there were small, small parts which were like, what can I say? The word uh, is, the sisters were the main parts of the movie. But Kylo was just pushed for another movie. Kylo could have just died in this movie easily, which was. I mean, for me, he could have easily died in this movie. So I'm just going to go and place this movie at C. Take it away. I mean, for me, I feel like the movie could have done a lot better considering the past two movies that we had gotten. And I feel like they tried to copy Empire Strikes Back way too much for it to be considered the, its own movie. It felt like, you know, with the director saying it felt like that they were just trying to bring everything back from that movie into this one. And it just left a lot of things unanswered. I mean, the casino part was just, I hate that part, to be honest. And I just feel like they could have done a lot better with this movie. I mean, I feel like it could have been written definitely a lot better. I feel like the direction could have been done in a different way, which could have improved the movie here and there. I mean, we did have a few good scenes, but most of it for me, the cons just are too much for me. Talking about where everybody else gave this movie. Amar gave it a C. Samin gave it a C. Yashar gave it an A. Um, Hassan gave it a B. Asad gave it a D. And Suhaib gave it a B. And I think on majority, we happen to have it on C. We do. So that's where that goes. And now we're going to talk about so I give this movie a C. The Rise of Skywalker. I think Star Wars fans are a bit spoiled. Okay, I'm just going to yeah mention one. We are. I forgot to watch this movie, so I'm not going to read this movie. For some reason, I I don't know how, but I've missed this movie somehow. That's fine. Just give it an A. So um, right. Um, let's see what others give. The reason I say that we're spoiled is because. Every generation of Star Wars fans ends up getting some new set of movies, a new set of media. We're getting episodes 11, 10, 11, and 12 eventually, right? It's going to be a new saga, new characters, new everything. But people seem to have problems with this movie because of the things that the movie added. Force healing. Uh, a lot of other small little tidbits here and there. I don't see the problem. The problem that I see when it comes to the rise of Skywalker is the fans. You need to realize, the fans need to realize, and I'm saying this openly to all our audience and we might get hate for it. I'm, I'm okay with that. But the, what I'm trying to say is that you have to realize that Star Wars is not a coherent franchise. We're not getting it's not like it's based on books that were written in the 70s or anything like that. It's an evolving uh, media franchise. There are things that just happen. Like you can't have everybody be happy because what the story that was told in the 70s was different because of limitations of technology back in the day. And then when we had the prequel trilogy that was told from a different perspective, a different style because of what we had available and the story that they had to tell. And as a result, the movies that are going to be told in the future can add things to it. And it, whether or not you like it, it's canon. Force healing, a lot of people had a problem with force healing. It's canon now, deal with it. So people had a, the problem with the force linkage between uh, Kylo and Ray, it's it's canon. You don't like it, it's it's canon. It's not like this was a that 
oh, this wasn't in the source material, this and that. There is no source material for Star Wars. You need to realize this. There is no source material for Star Wars. They can literally do anything they want and it's canon. And it more makes sense. You guys have a problem with Ray having force healing powers. Where was this problem in, uh, when uh, Baby Yoda did it in Mandalorian? I did not see the internet rioting when it happened. Yet, right? You have to. No, but yeah, well, but the Mandalorian came after after this, so you you can't just say that you know why does Baby Yoda have force healing? It's because they introduced force healing in this episode. I know <laughs> that's why he has it. I know they introduced force healing in this episode. Right, and the Mandalorian came out after. I'm aware of that. What I'm trying to say is, despite that, you guys had the audacity to say that they ruined Star Wars by making Force healing a thing. They ruined Star Wars by making the Force linkage a thing. But nobody complained on the internet when Baby Yoda did it. If it was such a big issue when Ray did it, it should have been a bigger issue when Baby Yoda did it because canonically that takes place before this movie. Maybe. Yeah, but it's already in canon. So why would people complain? They were just like, oh, people, now we have to deal with it. People wasted their complaints on this and are okay with it when you release it. That's what, I'm to, that's what I'm trying to say. It's canon. Whether or not you like it, it's canon. It's going to stay canon. You can complain about it all you want. There is no source material. Any source material we might have had was made deemed uncanon by Disney. Fair. Fair. Right? And mind you, in the books, force healing is a thing. Yeah, that good. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, mind you, in the video games, force healing is a thing. People yep. complained about this movie because they could, not because the movie was bad. The movie, in my opinion, is fantastic. It had a couple of issues. Like, I hate that the Knights of Ren were underutilized. That's probably my biggest gripe with this movie. The Knights of Ren were built up in episode seven and they were heavily underutilized in this movie. Right. And there are a couple of more complaints that because of my ranting, I can't seem to remember. But overall, you you need to realize that this movie is actually really, really good. I enjoyed it watching it in cinema. I rewatched it recently and I loved it again. I would rewatch this movie over and over again. People have a problem with Ray calling herself Skywalker. It was a very symbolic scene. And if you did not understand the nuance of that scene, then I don't know what to tell you, right? So for me, this movie could have been an A, but I'm giving it a B, right? And before I go on a rant for the rest of the next two hours. Okay, my only problem with this movie is that it had to deal with all the damage control from episode eight. It was too much damage control to actually be its own movie. The scenes that were in this movie are a little, I'm going to say, out of alignment because of the damage control, because they had so much of the fans complaining about everything in the last movie that they had to change this. Because the original script for this was really, really different. It had um, Ray wearing the black outfit like Luke had in um, Return of the Jedi. She had a double lightsaber in this. Um, there was there was going to be a lot of stuff happening, but I feel that just because of the Last Jedi, these guys couldn't make their own uh, movie. There's so much damage control for that. I have this as a C as well. I mean, honestly, I feel like yeah. I mean, I have the same problem with the movie that they had to do so much damage control that they couldn't exactly do everything that they wanted to do in this movie. I mean, again, the outfit cha- change. The black outfit, I feel like it could have been very symbolic, especially considering the fact that he ended up being like, I am a Skywalker. So that that is why, I mean, like I dropped this movie from an A to a B. I mean, I watched this movie like two months ago, maybe again for the fourth time. And I still loved it as much as I did when I first watched it. Before we go to the grades, everybody else, thank you for reminding me I was going to talk about the damage control. Uh, I Because of my ranting about the canon and everything I had forgotten to mention that but yes this movie spent a lot of time doing damage control for the previous movie but that's that's why you don't give the range to different people right so they thought giving it to Ryan Johnson would have been a good idea no right um when you give a trilogy something that's meant to be a trilogy right it's not like 
the original Star Wars where episode four came out and we didn't know we were going to get an episode five and then we ended up getting an episode five, right? Yeah. So we knew we were getting three movies and to hand that reign to someone else because obviously visions are different, right? Ryan Johnson had a different vision. J.J. Abrams had a different vision. It's the same thing with Justice League. We had differencing, difference of opinion when it came to Joss Whedon and Zack Snyder, which resulted in a very bad 2017 Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League alone was a very good movie. And if Joss Whedon was given the reins from the get-go, he would have had a really good Justice League movie. Maybe. Because he did a good Maybe. job with Avengers. Maybe. He might have done a good job with Justice League. What I'm trying to say is that it did damage control, but despite doing the damage control, I feel like it stood on its own enough, right? You could call that Brian Johnson. You could say that Kylo was lying the entire time, right? Just to me, whatever, okay, so whatever, right? The point is that it wasn't, it's not as bad as people are making it out to be, right? It's actually a pretty decent movie. I could, I would watch it again compared to one other movie in this thing that I haven't watched again since I watched it in cinema. We'll get to that. <laughs> Right, but I think the overall majority is a B. Let me just check the scores again. So we have Amar at B. We have uh, Janeda skip. We have Samin at C. Yashir at B. Uh, Hassan at D. We have Asad at B. And Suhail at C. So overall, this movie has a B. Now, let it be known for the record that Hassan hates this movie. He absolutely hates it. If he was here, this would be a six-hour episode. Yeah. Just just him fuming about it. Yeah. I just had to put it out there. And I would be defending this movie. I would defend this movie until my last day. It's, I, I, I stand by this movie. Just regardless of I, can go to I mean, that's what opinions are. But let's, you know. Yeah, yeah. we okay, could have had on. one whole episode just about this movie between Omer and Hassan. Yep. If you, guys, actually if, you guys, do if you guys want to see that, leave a comment down below. Mm, yeah. We'll make that happen. We can we can make that happen. Right. All okay. right, moving on. The next movie needs no introduction. One of the best Star Wars spin-off movies of all time, even though we've only got two. My God, this movie was so good. I, going into this movie, I did not expect it to be as good because we already knew what was going to happen because we've seen the sequel that came out 30, 40 years ago. It is Rogue One, and it is one of the best Star Wars stories told that is not Jedi related. It was amazing, absolutely fun to watch. Characters are great. I'm giving it an A. I wish it could be better. I too wish I could give it an S, but I, I have it down an A. Okay, did we need this movie? Did we need to know why the Death Star had that hole in it the first, you know, 40 years ago? No, but this movie i went in with no expectation i'm just like "Eh, it's a star wars movie i'm here because i'm a fan i was blown away it was it mm, i I don't know how to explain it but then it felt realistic like you it felt like you were part of the star wars universe like i mean we don't have jedi power so we're just a regular person but even regular people mattered in the star wars universe you know yeah. It was fantastic. And then that ending, oof, that hallway scene, which, by the way, Kanza still has not seen. She stopped just before that. Yeah. The I... best moment, maybe, so good. It... in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Maybe number two, just below, below the Anakin and Obi-Wan fight. But, oh, my God, that was fantastic. Oof. Wow. I fanboyed so hard watching that. Oh my god, it was fantastic. I loved it. How did did this movie get away with a PG-13 rating after that scene? I don't know. Okay, so this movie was a great movie. I was not, I did not start watching it with this perception in mind that this would be a great movie because I was like, ah, it's not an episode. It's just they're just developing another character for the movie. It won't be good, but it was good. Especially when, when you when you look at the two main actors which are in, in the movie, Mads and Forrest Whitaker, right? You know these let me let me clarify it with the character names. 
So you know Saw, Saw was Saw Guerrero, yeah. yeah, Saw Guerrero, and Galen Arso. So yep. when you when you know these two characters and in the movie, you know this will be a good movie. And uh, I was not expecting the Rebel Al- 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 Alliance to be back, and the risky they they made a risky move and. It, it was just out there. We, they didn't know it was going to be good or they didn't know whether the fans would react bad in, in for this. But it was a good movie. I mean, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, there were parts which were good. There were parts which were, uh, but probably give it, I'll give it an A. I want to give it an S for some reason, but I will give it an A. I'm not going to rate this movie because I haven't finished the movie yet. So Okay, so Omar can just go Let's with just move on to the next one. Sure. Uh, the scores. So this movie, I'm actually pretty happy because we're mostly unanimous on this movie. A, 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 S. This was a good movie. This was a we- good movie. Mm. Everybody gave this movie an A except Suhaib who gave it an S. And rightfully so, in my opinion, it deserves an S, but mm. I can't yeah, but, uh, give it an S when Empire Strikes Back to this. And now, Omer's favorite uh, movie. I hate his favorite. Movie. I hate this movie with a no. time favorite Star Wars movie. <laughs> right? People, I, I like, hate how do people movie. hate on, you know, Phantom Menace and The Last Jedi when this movie exists? I called it. I called it. There is a movie which is coming out which I will hate. <laughs> this is like, the one. Now, <laughs> this movie is not. It was bound to happen. This movie is not good, but it had so much potential. It had so much potential. I'm sorry. I did not come to see a Star Wars movie set in the Space West. I swear. I did not come to see a Star Wars version of a Western. Cough, cough, Mandalorian. <laughs> no, see, that, that I live with because that makes sense. It's a lone wolf western. This is a character we know, and we don't need to see their past. The thing which which I hate about this movie, and I think which is shocking, was I tried after watching, and I was making the tier list when Mubarak was asking me the scores. I was trying, maybe I find something good. I Googled it, what 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 may be good about this. The only thing, and I will quote, I will quote this from the website. I have a screenshot of it available. The quote states, Star Wars finally had a flop on a movie that in reality should not have been flopped. After receiving mostly positive reviews, the masses did not buy into a solo. This is a shame. Solo is a solid film, but it was not well directed, and it, we did not want to have this movie. Number one, we didn't need this movie at all. Exactly. That's the that's the last thing I said. We did not want to have this movie. Yeah, yeah that, that's the quote from the website. But from the fans, we didn't we didn't say that. Oh, we want a Han Solo movie. No. And it's it's like why and the part which where? shocks me. And... The part which shocks me. This is nominated for one Oscar. In what? In what? It's 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 stated okay. on MDB. Costume, okay. <laughs> it's costume design. I'm costume just, okay. I'm, that's different. Right. That's like celebrating Suicide Squad because it won an Oscar in costume design. It doesn't make it a good movie. Yeah. So I, I will yeah. just give it a D. Right. I think we've all given it a D. Yeah, we all have given it a D. Except one of us. Who gave yeah, we. It. Kanza says that, but then I see her score and it says C right here. I know. I see. I wrote C, yes. But then afterwards, I was like, what have I done? This movie has no space for a C. Because I hated this movie purely so much because I love Han Solo as a character. Up until this movie, I loved him. I still do. And it's the... But this movie could have been... So much Could have been better. so much better. And then the rumors yeah. during production of reshoots and how they had to uh, hire an acting coach, that did not put any confidence in us. Yeah, and I, then, was, I was looking forward to it before it watching was, and I was like, no, 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 no. It was almost as, this movie was almost as chaotic as Han Solo's personality, but it did not work out. They actually wanted to make two more movies out of this. They wanted to make a Han Solo trilogy. I, I've, it's, I'm was, glad that never happened. Okay, so... I don't want to see I didn't want to see a Star Wars Han Solo trilogy but 
what I did hope would come out of Solo, if nothing else, was the, you know, Obi-Wan story that we're now getting as a Disney Plus series. And like the idea was that a Star Wars story would eventually become a franchise on its own. And they would start telling stories of different characters like Yoda and all these other people. So essentially, this is what X-Men Origins was for the X-Men franchise, right? The idea was we'd get X-Men Origins, Magneto, X-Men Origins, Cyclops, and all these movies. But because X Men Origins Wolverine was such a big flop, we never. Head honest, I loved that movie. I don't. I watched it in cinema. I watched it in cinema. I loved that movie. Surprisingly, we have two outliers in our scores. We have Amar with a B. Amar, I I, I can actually tell you what why Amar gave it a B. But I can't tell you why Yashar gave it. Yeah, I I don't understand why Yashar gave it an A. Like um. I mean, I don't even know how the three of you are related at this point. Like, what's going on over here? I'm looking at the scores. So, Yashir... Honestly, tell me, man. If Yashir... Look, I can see... Yeah. Uh, sorry, Kamza, but if Yashir gave it an A, he gave it with good reason, right? So, because he is a bigger Star Wars fan than I am. Very much bigger Star Wars fan than I am. Right? And if he gave it an A, he has his reason. Um, but I don't know what that reasoning is. Maybe when we hear it, we might agree or disagree with it. But Amar gave it a B solely, solely, mind you, there's only one reason Amar gave it a B, and that was Darth Vader. I mean, Darth Vader, get on Darth Maul. Really? That's it? That one scene where he's sitting there, and then he stands up, and he's like, let me turn on my lightsaber just to scare you through the hologram? Are you scared right now? No. He skipped me. <laughs> and gave it a B just because of one thing. Yep, he gave it a B just for that one thing. Amar gave it a B just because of Darth Maul, which, by the way, I don't even think timeline-wise makes sense. No, it it does. It does. He's uh, he's there. Okay. So, Yash, uh, let's just move on. Uh, it's a D, right? Let's just put it on D and call it quits. <laughs> do we yep. need to explain why we hate this movie? <laughs> no, I think we do you not. Said enough so far. There's like so much in this movie <laughs> that hurts. How he get, got the name Solo. Ugh. He has no people. That Imperial officer, like, I'm going to name this movie Solo. We did not need a Solo backstory, especially because nothing in this movie makes sense when you watch episode 4, 5, 6, right? Nothing that we saw in this Solo solo movie uh, makes sense when you watch episode 4, 5, 6. The only thing that makes sense is Han Chalk first. <laughs> I don't care what you say, George Lucas, Han starts first. No matter how many remakes or additions we get. On that note, this is our tier list. And surprisingly, not bad. It's a good yeah, one. not bad at all. We have a good, we have good, uh, you know, good uh, amount of movies in A. We have some in B. And we have an S, obviously. That was uncontested. And just like that was uncontested, we have Solo in D. So I, I think this is uh, really nicely done. I also feel like if this was all the Harry Potter universe movies, this would have been inverse. Oh, that's maybe a next time we can podcast. We can you know take that on next time. That's a different oh, thing. Uh, Harry Potter you know, movie list coming soon. That includes Fantastic Beasts, by the way. Yes. Oh, oh let's have let's have so let's have that for um so much to let's have that for Harry Potter's birthday. Let's say have that what uh, 31st yeah. July. Well, I think it would be really apt and you know it'll fit there. But today is May the 4th. Uh, May the 4th be with you. Uh, the Bad Batch animated series is uh, streaming today on Disney Plus. Go check it out. We are going to go check it out after this because it, I believe it is just dropped for us right now. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that bell icon too. Uh, any closing words, you guys? Um, if you guys have any disagreements with anything on our tier list, be sure to give us an explanation below. And we, we, we read all your comments and we we like feedback. I will piss, I will piss most of you all. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> I'm going to intimidate Junaid now by standing up and igniting my lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Oh my God. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this discussion and uh, see you on the next episode of the podcast. It's time to close the topic.
tell you, go watch our videos.